But they're expected to come to this island wet <laughs> and ready to go for any one of the dipshits that they put in front of them. You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. Welcome to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. What is with my voice? I don't know. You're in a hurry. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. I don't know what this was. I don't know. It, I felt like you were running as you were saying. I know. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, we were, this one's going to be high and tight. Hell yeah. But I, Jesus, it yeah. was way too fast and I didn't like it. I it's one like of it. our new lean shows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're doing a lean show. Doing a real lean. We were talking about um, Marvel and uh, everything before we started the show. Oh, also, hi, I'm Kane Holloway. I'm, I'm Greg Barron. <laughs> this is Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. So let's talk about movies. A relationship show where we're going to talk about Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we're just talking about um, just how not excited we are about anything Marvel because there's too much Marvel. And then Warner Brothers has taken away all of the Snyder movies and Fuckboy Thank Island. God. I know, right? Mm -hmm. It's With the exception of Wonder Woman. Right. Which I liked. Yeah. I didn't love the second one, but I didn't feel like she should be in director's jail. Yeah, well, the second one was bad. dumb and stupid and bad. But, yeah, Patty but so Jenkins. so was the second four. Exactly. And from, so that doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Taika. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ta second Taika. And I would say, let's keep Taika making movies because Taika makes good movies. And He's Patty incredible. Jenkins made a great, w good Wonder Woman. Yeah. Everyone makes a bad movie. Uh, hopefully, James Cameron is about to make his second bad Avatar movie. Mm -hmm. But we will see. I mean, I've never rooted against a movie so hard in my entire <laughs> life than Avatar The I've Way I've been of rooting Water. against it since yeah. the first one. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> You can't. I I tried to. I was thinking from the beginning they were going to make five. <laughs> yeah, like he, if you asked James Cameron to put his dick on this table, he'd do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he'd love to show you how big his dick yeah. is. Yeah, it'd be yeah, blue. Yeah. He'd love to. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to have 3D glasses. Got those on. weird nostrils. <laughs> He'd have Sam Winston makeup artist all over it too. He's just this guy has been talking nonstop about how great he is as a director, mm -hmm. possibly even as a person. He's got Kanye level gravitas. Yes. And where he thinks he's untouchable. He had the fucking gall to talk about how much better uh, a streaming service he has in his own brain than all the streaming services out there combined. Which to me made me think like, oh, right, you're 150 years old. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like what a dumb thing to, what a dumb thing to do to just write off streaming. I know. Streaming is not anything but broadcasting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, you're, there's no, Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Piece of shit. I know. <laughs> Fuck you. He used to be like a hero, director's hero of mine, where I'm like, oh, James Cameron keeps making bangers, and then he makes Avatar, and then he won't stop sucking his own dick after Avatar. He's like, look what I can do. Dude, the, all, the Avatar is so overrated, and the fact that he has to, has to make $2 billion for it to be profitable is crazy. Mm -hmm. That is fucking insane. And, and I would have been on his side had that just been the headline. Like, oh shit, I hope people go and see it. But the fact that he's like, no one else could make an Avatar movie mm -hmm. other than me. Also... We have real indigenous people you could make a movie about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like all around the world. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you could put some time into that. Like yeah. to create these <laughs> fucking blue people <laughs> who I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And are mostly played by white people. <laughs> and also, you want to make $2 billion. You, he spends all this money, and that's exactly right, too. He spends all this money to make a independent. Like Lightstorm is his production company and he spends all of his own money to make this franchise of movies when yeah he could just 
give that movie, give that money to indigenous people, make a huge documentary. Because he also loves the Titanic. So he spends all of his money on submarines so he can go hang out on the Titanic. I think once you've seen it, you've seen the Titanic, James Cameron. <laughs> you don't need to keep going downstairs to see Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been a fan of his other than I like the T. I like T2. Yeah, T2 is great. But that's it. Yeah, it makes I me I hated cry. Titanic. Mm -hmm. I hated Avatar. I hate right. everything about it. Right. I hate the animation. I hate the CGI. I hate the people. I, ha I hate it. I hate him. <laughs> like, I don't really hate anything except Max Verstappen. Right. And, uh, and now James Cameron. <laughs> and James Cameron. And they're essentially the same person they, at this point. They might as well be. They might as well be. <laughs> Rich cunts. Um... But aliens is aliens is great. But that's what I'm talking about. He he has made good movies. You can't not you can't say he doesn't make good movies. But the movies he's making lately are they're movies. But the way he talks about it <laughs> as if he's saving the planet. <laughs> yeah. And it's driving me fucking crazy. Yeah. That's the only part of it. If he was just making movies, you know, like when Scorsese said that Marvel movies aren't movies, they're like thrill rides. It's not like he's sitting there saying he could make a better Marvel franchise. He just doesn't care for them. Or he doesn't think of them as cinema. I yeah, which is also stupid. That's silly, but it's also Martin Scorsese's not sitting there going, I could do it. <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I could do it way better. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But he's not. James Cameron is, is James, when Endgame broke records, he was like, congratulations, but you're no Avatar. And then they re-released Avatar and then he just made a little bit more money on top of the money he already has made for that movie because it was like the biggest grossing movie of all time. He's so gross. He's just, <laughs> yeah. he just wants to keep breaking records. I think you did it, man. I think you're fine. Just chill the fuck out. Yeah. Anyway, that was our James Cameron talk. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a Marvel talk. Yeah, and then <laughs> that's how much we hate him. <laughs> <laughs> so much we hate James Cameron. <laughs> also, yeah, we were going to talk about Mr. Fantastic, how John Krasinski uh, was Mr. Fantastic in the uh, Doctor Strange sequel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he, uh, you see him in it and you're like, okay. And then you, and then he doesn't even do anything fantastic in the movie. Mm -mm. And then he turns into spaghetti, spoiler mm -hmm. alert. And then he's dead, which then <laughs> makes me, I already think that the Fantastic Four, based on the movie franchise, are a bunch of fucking chumps. <laughs> and then you see him in the Marvel Universe, and then he goes out like a bitch. And then you're like, yep, I was right. And now I don't care. To watch Mr. Fantastic go out the way he did, I'm like, well, I don't want to see a bumbling idiot lead a team of superheroes. Yeah. I, I don't it, care anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I I, it, I was excited about that. Now I'm not excited about anything Marvel. No. And they're talking about doing a Silver Surfer, and I think they're going to fuck that up too. Oh. <sighs> yeah, and they're. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I stop. I, I. I said I was excited about Ant Man, Quantumanium, and also I'm not at the same time. I don't. I I want to. I will watch it. Mm -hmm. I'll go out of my way to watch it. And then I will probably feel the way I feel right now, where I was like, yep, that happened. <laughs> yeah. That was two hours or whatever. Anyway, that was, that's how my thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you have something from BuzzFeed. I do. I brought in uh, another BuzzFeed article. This one is about people revealing their opinions uh, about behaviors that immediately give them the ick. Mm hmm. Like when you're seeing somebody and then they do something and you get the ick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I think is such I a... Wish, uh, do you hate that term? I, it's the harshest term I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's, so, it's so accurate, though. I know. Mm -hmm. I wish we had it back in the day. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's... Well, we didn't think of it, but yeah. because there literally somebody can wear a pair of shoes that can give you the ick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watched this girl was watching. There, so there's a TikTok of a guy who chops wood, uh -huh. and um, he's like this big bulky guy, and he take he and he takes his suspenders off, and he takes like one good whack 
with his axe and he's like he's grunting then he decides like all right i'm done chopping it i'm gonna remove the axe with one hand and then he's gonna get in there and then he's gonna rip this big hunk of wood with his bare hands while be like like being like come on you fuck mm. and then <laughs> girls react to it and are crazy horny like he keeps like <laughs> slapping it and then he'll like rip it apart and he'll be like uh, uh, uh. and then these girls are like uh, and then one guy was like oh man i want to do that and he <laughs> he has like real thin arms oh, no. and he starts whacking at it and the the axe is getting stuck in the wood <laughs> and he can't get it off <laughs> And then he tries to like rip it apart and he won't happen. He's like using his foot. And the whole time this girl's like, I got the ick. Like I was initially rooting for the guy, but now I got the ick. And the ick hit so hard. Because mm -hmm. initially she was like, all right, I'm kind of into this guy. And then the fact that he couldn't split the wood and it took him the whole video. And I still don't think he did it. Oh, no. She was like, I got the ick. And I've heard it a lot. Like I live. Yeah, in, people use it all the time now. Yeah. And I live in a, I live in like Pacific Beach in San Diego where a lot of people like get dressed up, go clubbing after sh the shows I'm on. And, you know, I'll watch women actively talk about which guys they had a thing for or even comics on the lineup. And then they did one thing and they got the ick, which then if you feel that way, that takes over your whole body now for the rest of that that person, whatever that person mm -hmm. initially but had attraction to. But it's a weird phenomenon to. because somebody goes from hot mm -hmm. to not yeah, right mm -hmm. away. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't see them anymore. Right. For what you did see in them. Yes. It's almost like they had, it's almost like they got up from the bed and they had tissue paper hanging from their ass. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even explain to him, but I'm done. I know. It's fucking, and it's such a, but it's so brutal. That's a real story, by the way. A friend of mine told me. Oh, God, <laughs> no. About getting the ick. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she was oh. in this guy and he got up from the bed and he had toilet paper hanging from his ass. Oh, my God. <laughs> I one time I was uh, this comic friend of mine she was doing a poll on Instagram and she goes when um, when do you think you gave someone the ick and it was like oh I was making out and I got a bloody nose and it dripped on their face oh god we never kissed again oh yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, well, neither of those are on this list, but we do have a couple of things on here. I'll, I'll read them and you guys let me know what you think. Uh, we've got referring to their ex-girlfriends as psycho or crazy. It's a huge red flag for me. Yeah. It's so beat to say that at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, that works. Yeah. We've got... Even if they're great when it's just the two of us, if they act like a totally different and obnoxious person with their friends, I'm going to nope out of there. Mm -hmm. If they completely change who they are around their friends. Become the real selves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. When they're the real version of them comes out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he always knew everything, even when it was obvious he didn't. Mm -hmm. Know it all, people. Know it all, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even if you do know it all, <laughs> keep it to yourself, man. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm telling attractive. a story. Stop yeah. interrupting me. <laughs> Let's see here. When all of someone's stories or their entire personality revolve only around how drunk or high they got, it's like their entire life and all they can talk about is partying, <laughs> drinking, getting high, etc. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what, uh, those are stories that are later told at AA meetings. Yes. Just with a whole different context. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was so drunk. <laughs> I lost my baby. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. In a mall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got, went on a hiking date with someone who littered. There was no second dates. <laughs> someone who littered. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like so inconsequential when you hear it but i mean yeah when you think about someone just throwing trash on the like, yeah like they major. had a power bar and then just dumped mm -hmm. the trash Jumped on the, the trash yeah i'd be mm -hmm. fucked yeah i would be turned off too but it yeah. would, i wouldn't think about it I, I would feel the same way about not picking up dog shit yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. like I, uh we can't know each other no <laughs> This is a good one. Not believing dinosaurs are real. 
Yeah. That gives me the ick. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I am tired of dinosaurs, though. <laughs> I'm. S- <laughs> When I, don't I was need a little kid, anymore. and I liked them, as yeah. you do, mm-hmm. and now I fucking hate them. You see the trailer? I hate the Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> yeah, they're terrible. And I don't want to see the movie with Adam Drivers yep. <laughs> in the future with dinosaurs. Oh, no. In the, in the or past, in the past. He goes whatever 65 million years oh, no. ago. Ago. <laughs> and it's Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. With, oh, God. With, with modern, with, with, like, <laughs> with super future weapons. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And a little girl that seems like she's just learning words. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's basically aliens, but with dinosaurs. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looked dumb. And I'm a huge Adam Driver. I, I support Adam Driver. I can't say I'm a huge fan, mm. but I think he's hilarious and yeah, really good at what he does. Yeah, he's good, and, and uh, it's the guys that wrote Quiet Place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need dinosaurs anymore either. No. I don't think we ever hate to talk about them Like, again. I hate seeing them now. <laughs> yeah, I know. They bug the fuck out of me. You know what's upsetting is we're dinosaurs. And eventually... We're dinosaurs? We're dinosaurs. Yeah. And well, we're, eventually we're dinosaurs. Uh, eventually. And yeah. I think we're nearing closer to us being dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, and I, by that I mean the human race that no one wants to talk about anymore. <laughs> right. I'm done. We're, I'm done with that. Because the brain is a virus. <laughs> yes. Exactly. The human brain is a virus. It is a virus. <laughs> It's so poisonous. Yep. All right. I think we'll close it out with this one. We've got people who bitch about others. If they're doing it to you, they're doing it about you. I, I don't know. Sometimes people that bitch about people are funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. most of this. You can say funny shit about people you don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I, I don't. I, I mean, if somebody's always negative, then it's a bummer. Right. But like. Amira says shit about people that fucking kills me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> also, what, what are you going to talk about half the time if not talking about how other people fuck up? I mean, this she'll say t- it about other people's kids. <laughs> <laughs> that little girl, that little girl has fat ankles. <laughs> Anybody that wasn't nice to Mighty had fat ankles. <laughs> <laughs> and my, and it only made me love her more because her. Love for Mighty and her protective instinct makes her really funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, and Amira is. Those fucking bangs. Look at her fat ankles. Oh my God. She's saying that about a five year old. <laughs> five year olds need to be taken down a peg or two. You know how confident five year olds are? They can be They're super too confident. confident. Yeah. Walk around, they can't barely talk, <laughs> think they know everything. They don't say please. I'd bring Amira in to fucking knock them down. Oh, oh fuck. My God. Tell them to shut up to their face. That'd be great. We'll read a self-help quote, and they're definitely not memes. Memes are something completely different than quotes. Quotes are supposed to help you through all the bullshit in your life. And memes are like, uh, that poster of that cat hanging from a tree. And it says, hang in there, baby, or Mondays, am I right? Mondays, am I right? So if you can think of a different title, then we'll probably change it. What does this meme, the theme, the, this is the theme of the second segment. <laughs> no, it's not the theme of the second <laughs> segment. What does this theme? We just, heard, we just heard the theme song. Yes. And what does this meme is what we call the segment. Right. And then we read quotes. Thank you, And Greg. people are so tired of hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got an idea for a better mm-hmm. second segment, yep, write us. Please, please do that. Um, I have some memes, inspirational quotes uh, that I think might do well on this show. Who's we'll see? Who mm-hmm. knows? Mm-hmm. I just found it. They're called fuckboy quotes. Oh boy. Nobody appreciates a good girl until she doesn't give a fuck anymore. I don't, know. I don't know if that's entirely true. Mm, yeah. yeah. Ah, damn. I thought these were going to be. There's just. 
Racist? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, if your words say one thing and your actions another, you're an asshole. Okay, these are about fuckboys. Ah. Mm. Oh, I thought it was from fuckboys. That's what I was hoping it was. <laughs> I would love to have a page from <laughs> fuckboys. Oh, yeah. But that would all be like, that bitch is hot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, here's one. Uh, if Jennifer Aniston can get over Brad fucking Pitt, then you can get over that fuck boy in your life. That's fair. Mm-hmm. 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 That's fair. I bet it's easier to get over Brad Pitt than you think. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Brad Pitt, but something about him makes me think, I don't know if I'd miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I miss Brad Pitt. Like, I loved him. But do I miss him? Right. Do I miss the conversations? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Brad probably talk a lot about Brad. Feels like Brad's got a real hot girl energy to him. Mm. You know? I, I just think, I mean, he seems like a cool enough guy. I don't know how deep you're going with him. He <laughs> yeah. does like architecture. Okay. So does George Costanza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. All right. How about this one? Nothing's worse than a fuck boy who doesn't think he's a fuck boy and talks about other fuck boys like he ain't one. <laughs> I feel like I've done that. <laughs> I feel like that one's about me. Uh, these are mostly about avoiding fuckboys. Um, this one I think is kind of dumb. Uh, you dropped a diamond while picking up pennies. Wow, it's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's> super heavy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You had it all and you lost it. Okay, this one rhymes. You awesome. ready? Yeah. Um, trust no player, fear no bitch, give no pussy, suck no dick. People play games and are full of shit. Play the role and be the baddest bitch. Ugh. Hey, what? Mm-hmm. What does sucking dick have to do with that? <laughs> I mean, what is, why do you got to, why can't you, I know. sucking dick isn't a, it's a nonpartisan thing. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can suck a dick and feel empowered while doing so. I don't think you should stop, you don't have to stop sucking dick to be a better person. Yeah. You don't have to actively go out and suck dick, but I mean, if you like doing it, that doesn't make you... Worse for wear. It's nonpartisan. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> some people love sucking dick, and some people love getting their dick sucked. <laughs> yeah. There's a you know meet up. <laughs> no shame in it. Group. No, of course yeah, there's no, no shame in it. I don't like the kink shaming. No, me neither. <laughs> well, that's what I had. What do you have? Well, we're gonna go from fuckboy quotes to real man quotes. Yes. All right, we've got. I have a sad story too. But guess what? No one cares. Work harder. <laughs> I love the work harder bit. I love the work harder bit. It should have ended like four or five times. I know. You know? It kept going. It just kept right on going. <laughs> yeah, it should have ended. Someone was feeling themselves that day. Oh work harder. Work harder. You work harder. <laughs> Why don't you do something besides fucking real man quotes? Yeah. Is it really paying the bills? Could it be paying the bills? <laughs> Somehow I doubt it. Mm-mm. I think we'll close it out with this one. <gasps> also from Real Man Quotes. Uh-huh. Never lower your worth for worthless people. Well, sure. Obviously. But why is that a real man quote? That can apply know. to anybody. I don't know. Don't lower your worth for worthless people. That's exactly what it is, Aaron. It's exactly don't take bullshit from fuckers. 
He's fucking jacking our shit. <laughs> I'd be so happy if he listened. That would be great. And every week wanted to hear this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So they're doing it again. He just doesn't get that we hate him. <laughs> Segment three, ready to go, ready to fucking get to the finish line of this episode. Mm-hmm. It's been a real fast one. Yeah. We've been good and fast. We're coming up to Christmas, man. Yeah, That's baby. Right. Uh, is this a gift for your ears? <laughs> Would you give this show to somebody? Give the show to somebody for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say you really don't like somebody. <laughs> give them give the them gift this of this podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or send them this part of the show and um, where we all say, hey, fuck you to whoever it is that's a fucker in your life. Greg, you go ahead. Fuck you. <laughs> Pat? Fuck you. Perfect. Send that to somebody you hate this Christmas. <laughs> uh, over on our Discord, DTBFF podcast, uh, Emily in our random comment section said, I'm taking all of these clip shows to mean that they can't record because Kane is away on a dating show for divorcees. I'm going to be so mad if it's any other reason. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Do I need to be specifically on a dating show for divorcees? <laughs> Can I be on any random? Can I be on Too Hot to Handle? They don't have to be divorced to be on that show. Do you think I'm Too Hot to Handle, Greg? Are you Too Hot to Handle? Yeah. I mean, I think so. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, obviously, I get that energy from you. Yeah. Pat, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Well, maybe I'll try. I'll be on uh, Too Hot to Handle. And I'll go on with a girlfriend. <laughs> I really can't break any of the rules. <laughs> would be the point. It would just be go on there just to show how hot I am. And I think I would be if they if they implemented a vote out system, I'd be voted out pretty quickly. <laughs> they get the women on that show are DTF. <laughs> they are DTF. Mm-hmm. But on the other shows, they're not so DTF. No, absolutely not. Like and they're I, barely down to kiss. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And I think it's mainly that idea that if you can't have it, you absolutely want it. Because there's nobody is getting married from too hot to handle. But when they, here's the thing. So they, the premise is you don't even know you're going on that show. Right. But when they're casting, they have to fucking get women that are wet now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, how do you, how do you find that? Yes. Like, finding horny dudes. Uh huh. And again, and I and I'm not. This isn't me saying women aren't horny. Right. But as a general rule. Yes. Men can just go. Yeah, of course. You just get a bone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Women need a little something. <laughs> right. They need a story. Yeah. Yeah. But they're expected to come to this island wet <laughs> and ready to go for any one of the dipshits <laughs> that they put in front of them. And they're supposed to be so fucking horny. <laughs> right. These women are so horny yeah. that they'll throw money away. <laughs> That they could win. <laughs> right. For the potential. These are women that can't not fuck. <laughs> right. Where do you get them? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a Florida thing? <laughs> like, I don't even feel porn stars want to fuck that much. No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Uh, that's a really good point. That's a very good point. I didn't even think about it in that way. I didn't even think about that. It just, to me, it was like, it's a super, you know, like on, on Love Island, it takes people sometimes weeks to kiss mm-hmm. for the, for, kiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the first time. Right. Every once in a while, somebody goes rogue and fucks in the bedroom <laughs> when they're all in the same room. <laughs> they all sleep in beds together yeah, in the right. same room. Yeah, yeah. Ew. <laughs> Sometimes people go rogue and do that, but rarely. Yeah. Mostly people put a pillow between themselves because they're not even ready for cuddles yet. 
Aww. But on this show, <laughs> within 15 minutes of starting the show, <laughs> yeah. somebody wants to finger blast you. <laughs> and they're ready and open and willing. They're ready to finger blast. I've, ne- I've never seen on any season on Too Hot to Handle anyone st- and they're like that before the they find out they're on too hot to handle that's what i'm that's, saying yeah like right that's before- what i'm saying like if you knew you were going on too hot to handle you know i gotta act horny yeah mm-hmm. like a porn star yeah of course you go on like a porn star you're right. like i'm always hot i'm always in heat i want to <laughs> fuck <laughs> even this guy with the with the comb over <laughs> i want to fuck the guy with the comb over right but they don't know they're on that show. Yes. So they're just horny people. They're just horny people near c- constantly. Yeah. How do you find out uh-huh. as a casting director? Yeah. Who the horny people are? <laughs> Maybe that's one of the questions in the questionnaire you fill out when you're trying to get on a reality show. You know? I would love to find. I mean, I, I think it would be an interesting documentary to do reality show casting. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Because as much as the productions will say. They're looking for sane, mentally healthy, <laughs> good people. They're not. No, They're never no. looking for that. Who the fuck wants to watch that? They want sociopathic yes. horn dogs. Of course. With an, who are fame obsessed. Yes, mm-hmm. who are with an emphasis on fuckability as well. Like they have to be just as fuckable as they are horny. Yeah. So. You got to find someone crazy hot who wants to who wants to fuck on a reality TV show. I mean, like, it's also like you have to find people that are willing to spend days in a bathing suit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, God. You know what I think is the weirdest part about Too Hot to Handle is the fact that at night they're not going anywhere. They're still in the villa. They don't go out. This and they're, is the same with Love Island. Their mm-hmm. dates... They don't go into town. No. They just go to like a picnic. They go to... No, they go picnic. to another part of the property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are they getting ready for? <laughs> they all fucking iron out the wrinkles of their shirts and shit and then put on clothes to then go sit around the same poolside. They've been sitting around all day. But these are Instagram people that put on outfits for photos. Oh. So they have outfits. Right. It They're, drives me crazy. Yeah. I hate when they do that. That girl... That's on right now, Flavia. Flavia. She's already got like 4 million followers. Jesus. Of course she does. <laughs> she like, is. I think they get them straight from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just to me, in her photos, none of them are really that provocative. Mm-hmm. And there's her, her ass, which they made her show everybody. Oh, yeah. She had to stand up and show everybody how great her ass was. She's like, look at my ass. <laughs> and then she did a shot of her ass. It's not on her Instagram anywhere. <laughs> not that I looked. <laughs> but for this show yeah. she was willing to put her ass out there yeah of course there's a lot of Flavia's ass here's my there. value yeah exactly oh yeah and she makes she she tries to entice a guy who's in a relationship or a relationship on the show by showing her ass that's what I'm saying yeah and uh, maybe he'll break his code um, and they get a free kiss and this whole thing yeah And that is an interesting concept to then think about. Because, yeah, you can find good-looking guys who are down to fuck. You can find ugly guys who are down to fuck. You're going to find more ugly guys down to fuck than you are (laughs) hot guys that are down to fuck. Um, So, yeah, that would be interesting. uh, I'm I'm obsessed with Too Hot to Handle for the very concept that people are just the concept alone. Um, yeah, and then on top of which, trying to be better people because even the because I do love that they're uh, they try to redirect their sexual energy into activities that are inherently crazy horny. <laughs> they make you more horny. They they're it's and the weird thing about it is the value of the show is chased. Mm-hmm. It's actually a very regressive show. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a non-sex positive show right. where you're punished for fucking. Yeah, of yeah. course. And, and yet it's the, the horniest show on television. <laughs> it's the horniest show. I can't, I can't fathom any, especially new couples who watch this show, 
not to try to watch try watching the show and you're already crazy horny for each other and not immediately fuck halfway through an episode because mm-hmm. you're watching people attempting not to fuck mm-hmm. and then getting fined for it and they have to be secret then they have to hold on to it and there's this whole big right. reveal uh, that Lana comes out and fucking rats on them and then there's this whole big show of remorse and then they go back and they finger each other again anyway <laughs> yeah no they're like they're, the couple goes and takes a naked shower together <sighs> And then they cut to her spitting out toothpaste. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And say, what happened there? Yeah. Did she blow him? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely implied yeah. that she did that. But then they just had like real casual, real quick shower sex for the first time. For the first time. The first time you've ever had sex with somebody is real quick and in secret. They had it on camera. <laughs> on camera. <laughs> in secret. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then got busted for it later, which I feel like... And s- charged. Sex should be way more expensive than it is. Sex should be like 50 grand. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, they should really cut their fucking ankles out from under them when you... F- if you fuck, you're almost completely in debt. Yeah. But they don't do that either. That's where I think the show is starting, suffers a little bit for me, where they're like, you could just, you could really hit them in the, in their bank account. Like, yeah. They should, it should be a thing where you blow half, half money. Yeah. For you, fucking. You should mm-hmm. get a million dollars. You should, there's a, we should up the price to at least, or half a mil, at half, least. Half a million dollars. About $200,000, you know, you can w- win that accidentally anywhere. You can just like find that amount of money. So especially them on Instagram, being influ- influencers and stuff, yeah. they're gonna make way more money than two hundred grand. Yeah, and they know that. So playing for two hundred grand means fucking nothing. Up it to a million, and then if they do anything, the the ch- the price amounts are even bigger. And then so you must re- you have to really care about this person to want to fuck them because you might lose half of the bag. Yeah. And I think that's where that show, they need to do it next season. They need to Also, the there should be fights after someone loses, <laughs> loses you a bunch of money. Yeah. Another contestant should slug them. <laughs> they're not mad enough because they all know they're going to be on Instagram. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Or TikTok or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. They're like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm super pissed. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> it's a real big show. I do love it, though. I do love when they have to sit there and take their fucking beating. That is my favorite part. And it does need to be a little more. It needs to be worse. Their beating needs to be a lot worse. Um, what do we got? We got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up? Oh, man. Well, that was that was the show. Yeah, that was our bonus episode about... <laughs> too hot There's to no handle. reason to do it. Too hard to handle bonus episode. We no. just did it. We just did it. Just I mean, now. So you got a bonus episode... And in an re- episode yeah. that's shorter than all of our other ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's a 15-minute episode, uh, and we hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, right into the show about your fuckers, your, uh, if you're having issues, family stuff. Christmas is around the corner. People have to deal with that. So if you're struggling with anything like that, you can email us at dtbffpodcast at gmail.com. If you have dating questions um, or questions about literally anything else, uh, hit us up on Instagram as well, DTBFF Podcast. Go to join the Discord, DTBFF Podcast. Also, you can support the show, patreon.com slash DTBFF Podcast. Uh, we have bonus episodes and video versions of the show are up there. Uh, you can follow me at Kane Holloway. I'm Greg Barron, and it's Gregors. I'm at DTBFF Producer Pat. You can also call in the show. What's that number, Pat? Uh, that number is 323. Three. Three seven nine five five four four. Don't take bullshit from fuckers. Welcome. Hey there. If you like the show, you can nice. find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Mm-hmm.